Hi, welcome to Jimmy D's RC page. Thanks for stopping by. If you like what you see today, please click the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and uh, you'll see any new videos that pop up along the way. So today what I'm gonna do um, is replace the flying wires on the starboard side of my Dynam Tiger Moth. Had it out this morning, and I guess I was pulling a few too many Gs. The telemetry said something like 5.8 and uh, I went and snapped the flying wires on the right hand side. So what I'm going to be uh, using is what I replaced the original stock flying wires with in the first place. This, it's called Senfil. Uh, basically it's a 0.4 millimeter seven strand steel cable and it's got um, a little bit of a plastic coating on it so it's nice and smooth. Used for jewelry and beading. So that's what I'm gonna be using to replace that flying wire. So without further ado, Let's get to it. So what I've got down here, you probably can't see it, so let me just turn that around for the camera so you can see it, is I've got myself a wheel collar right there, and that has uh, that basically holds the flying wires together, and I've just cable tied those to this vertical strut. So what I'm gonna do is be loosening off that, um, that wheel collar so that I can get those cables out. So let's get to it. I'll probably fast forward this and maybe put on some silly music. So uh, enjoy the show. And then we'll talk about how we're going to route the flying wires. All right, old flying wires done. No use for that, so we'll just throw that in the bin. But what I am gonna do is I am going to keep this little, they got this little keeper that came stock. I'm gonna slide that right off. If it'll come off easy, and it does, and then I'm going to reuse that. Just makes it gives a nice clean look, you know. Now, if you go on to rcgroups.com, I'll put a link in the description below. You can uh, there's a diagram here for how to route flying wires when you use just one strand, which is what I'm going to do. So you can see you start up here and then follow the numbers, and Bob's your uncle. It should be good. question is how much do I need so I'm just gonna eyeball it so uh, they actually want us to start up here so what I'll do I think yeah what I might do is route it through later so that I can keep everything tight. I will just temporarily put a clip on there so I can pull it quite tightly. Just one of these, uh, one of these handy clamps, quick grips. They're good fun. So useful for this hobby. So I'll just clamp that down. Uh, you know, I should wrap it too, so give it some mechanical advantage. I'll wrap it first, then I'll clamp it, coming the other way. And hopefully that'll give it a better opportunity to hold, a bit more firmly, because I want to keep this rather taut. Okay, so it goes from this rear strut to start, then number two is the forward strut. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so first one. Let's move that over so you can see the work. Hopefully. Oh, looks like the battery charger is done. Let's put some wheel chops on today. Let's put a wheel chop on it. It doesn't roll off the table. I also want to make sure I don't catch on any control surfaces because it's just a foam model, of course, and uh, it can get cut a little bit. I prefer not to have that happen. Try to keep her looking as nice as possible. This is modeled, this is Juliet Alpha Uniform modeled after one of the uh, Tiger Moths I used to fly back when I was a commercial pilot. I still have the, the rating, but I'm not current at the moment. I'm I don't think I'm ever going to get a chance to fly another Tiger Moth unless I win the lottery. 
wouldn't that be nice? I have about 400 hours in the on type, and uh, I do miss it. And that's what happens, I guess. You have children, and your priorities shift. So I relive my uh, glory days through models. Okay, glory. Yeah, we'll run that through there. So there's point number three. Okay, which is the rearward top strut. There she comes, I'm getting the cotton heel on. It's funny, you know, it goes to that one spot every time. Every time. First time I, I routed them as well. Just wants to get caught in that aileron. Okay. From number three goes down here. There's point four, right on the airframe on the fuselage. Okay, easy one to run through, and then it's going to come back. Whoops. Point five is the front strut of the top. Is that right? Yes. Is the front strut at the top. I'm trying to keep tension. You always need a third hand, I find, doing this stuff. Any offers? <laughs> there we go. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep it tight as I go because I found that tightening it up after the fact was a bit difficult. Okay, I might even give it a little bit of a bend there. Go. Okay, now point five is the top of the front strut. Sorry if I'm in the way. There, maybe this will help. Oh, I'll be a bit better. Sorry. Oh, there we go. Oh, forget that. So, uh, welcome to amateur hour. <laughs> but that's the whole point of this hobby, right? We're not supposed to be pros, we're amateurs out here doing this because we love it, because it's fun. All right, leave the uh, fine stuff to the pros. All right, number five. Match them up. There, that's better. Five. That's a nice look. Okay. And then crisscross. Six is down here. The the rear strut. Bottom. Well, it's just not quite as difficult as threading a needle. Not quite. Okay, and that. We'll now go to our last point, which is at the very top here. Now is where it gets a little fiddly, as though it hasn't been fiddly so far, which it has. Now it gets a little fiddly. All right, what I might do is just twist that around the needle nose pliers there like that, just to keep it taut. And I'm just going to open up this uh, little aluminium sleeve a little bit. So that it'll go on easily and then it'll be easy enough to bend it off later so all i'm going to do i just got one of these little probes i'm just going to insert that probe gently make sure i don't stab myself hard into the end and just spread that gap a little bit make it easy to run the, the flying wire through there's the table to help. I don't know if you can see that. You probably can't. I'm probably a little low for you. But that's all I've done is just push it out to open up the gap a little bit. There, like that. Not exactly I have to see daylight through it, but just to be able to get through it's a bit easy. There we go. There's the first. Goes through. 
easy peasy Japanesey. And the second. All right, now this is where I can lose uh, tightness. So let's see what way to disengage that way. So without tripping up on the other cables too much, I'm just gonna take that out, bring these together. Yeah, so you can see I had significantly more cable than I needed. There's my third hand doing the work. You beauty! Got her all together. Okay. I'm going to trim this now so it's not so fiddly. Make it easier to work with. And there we go. Same way. Easier to work with. Up we go through the hole. One, get in there. One, two, through the hole. Okay, we'll pull it tight. Move this up. Make sure everything's tight. Feels pretty good. Feels pretty good. That can go right to the top, and I'll tighten that later after I get the wheel collar on. Uh, there's the wheel collar right there. Run my cables through. One, two. Still holding it tight. Again, I can use the clips here, just to make my life a little easier. Quick grip. Okay. Get the Allen key in. Okay, and before I cinch her up, now I'm pulling. And I'm pulling significantly. Pulling, pulling. And now I'll tighten the wheel collar. Cinch her down. Back one's a little loose, so I might tighten that one up a bit more. in there and hold the, the collar with the needle nose so I can really tighten it down. There we go. Nice and cinched. All right, I'll release the quick grip. Now I think we're probably going to need a couple of new cable ties there because I don't think I'll be able to get those wires through. They just keep it nice and clean. I guess I could cut it. I didn't expect that they would break. Uh, as quickly as they did. I thought they might stretch first and that I'd have to replace them more often. Um, but they, they seem to have broken. So do you know what? No, I can get those through those cable ties quite easily. You know what? I was thinking maybe of cutting it sh super short. But uh, look, I'll just leave a little, just in case. I mean, I'd rather not waste it, right? If I can avoid it. So I'll just keep those up tight for now. Same on that side, that's nice and tight. This side hasn't broken yet. How funny, I wonder why it was the starboard wing. So when I first set up this model, it was um, rolling to the right quite heavily and pitching up quite heavily. And I think that's a lot of feedback that you get off this Dynam Tiger Moth is that um, it is quite tail heavy when you set it up stock. And I really found that it was difficult to to fly straight and level without a heck of a lot of nose down trim. So I did that and uh, the elevator uh, seemed to be, it seems to be quite level now. She's trimmed well to fly straight and level pretty much on takeoff and the elevator when uh, when everything is neutral is, is pretty much level with the stabilizer which is pretty nice. Um, anyway, so there it is. Done and dusted. 
new flying wires on, and uh, we'll see what happens next time. So, thanks for checking out my page. Walk around the camera one more time. Thanks for having a look at the video. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. I'll be doing more of the same type of stuff. All the best to you.